Now the last chapter I want to look at is the, the design, so the physical design options of a solar charge controller. Now the first one is quite obvious, but believe it or not, it's often overlooked. So what kind of connections do you want to have between your solar panels and your charge controllers? Do you want to have the MC4 connectors or just the bare threaded connections? Please keep this in mind when you're selecting yours because it can be quite annoying if you get the one that has the threaded connections and all your wires from your solar panels come with MC4 connectors. I've seen it happen. The second one is the type of interface, user interface that you want to have. So do you want to have a display? Uh, do you want to have the one with the buttons on the side or the touchscreen display? Keep in mind that if you're placing it outside, and it could become wet, that at least I find it incredibly annoying if there's water on a touchscreen display and trying to work with it. Uh, so that's one. Or do you just want to have no uh, display and just connect with it wireless or through a, a cable? In my opinion, in my experience, the easier the interface is, uh, the better for you, the easier it is for you to monitor it and the more often you'll do it. So if it has an easily readable display, if you walk, you walk past it, you just check on it and it's much easier to, to manage your system and stay on top of any kind of maintenance issues. Now, and the last two I want to mention is the, the type of cooling that you prefer. So uh, do you want to have a system where the air can just flow through your controller or do you ever want to have it completely sealed off? It's more conventional to have a box which is open and where there's a natural ventilation or there's a fan inside. But if you'll be in a very dusty environment or in a salty environment, you might not want all of that contamination to flow through your controller. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And the last one is whether or not the units are stackable. And I don't mean it in a physical way, but more in a communication way. So if you would want to expand your solar capacity later on. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go out again. Would it be possible to connect a similar device and let them work together as a pair, right? Which is really important. So you can use different panels, like one set of panels with one charge controller, another set of panels with another charge controller. But the two charge controllers, they need to be compatible. So normally you would choose the, the same model and then connect them with each other so they can talk to each other and they can do exactly the same thing. So this is quite important to consider as well if you might want to expand your system in the future. So let's go to the whiteboard and let's look at a practical example of a solar charge controller. So this is a grid tight solar charge controller and you can see that it has a total of eight inputs, four positives and four negatives. Uh, you can see that it has a display. It's not a touchscreen display, but just with the buttons on the side, it's something that I prefer when it's installed outside. When it's inside, I kind of tend more towards the touchscreen display. Uh, you can see that it's got a wireless connection. This one's got a very good uh, range because it's a very strong wireless connection, which I really, really prefer. And it's got an open box so the air can flow through it, which in this situation is not harmful because there's no dusty or salty environment. So that's just an example of a real life inverter. So let's go online again and let's look at an example of a solar charge controller and let's look at the design options. So I'm going here to the website of epsolarpv.com. I am not affiliated. And I just want to look at one of their solar charge controllers. Let's take the first one, the simple one, the extra series, 10 amp, 20 amp. Yep, sounds good. So here we are. And let's go straight to their data sheet. So let's download the data sheet. I want to know which kind of connections it has, right? When you look at the photo it's pretty clear it definitely seems like screw connections but i want to confirm that they are actually the screw terminals and i also want to know what the maximum wire size is that i could connect to this uh, solar charge controller right because it depends if you want to use a really heavy wire gauge you must make sure that it actually fits in the solar charge controller so let's look at the first model the extra 1206n Right, it all looks good. It's got a pretty good uh, conversion efficiency, actually. Almost 98%. That's a good value. But I cannot find the information on the terminal size. Normally it's in the specification sheet, but maybe it's in the manual. 
So let's go back to the main website. Instead of the data sheet, let's download the user manual for this sort of charge controller. Okay, this document is a little bit bigger. The information should be here. So let's look at six text technical specifications on page number 36. So here we are, technical specifications, model 1206N. And I'm looking for the terminal sizes, right? What kind of terminals are there? It's there on the mechanical parameters, terminal sizes. There you go, 12 gauge. So you can connect wires up to 12 gauge to this solar charge controllers. So there you go, that's just an example of how you can research.